Last week I published a class on uh, secretary otitis media and the treatment of secretary otitis media uh, is mirugotomy with insertion of ventilation tubes. So there are so many queries uh, regarding the ventilation tube and of course it is a favorite topic of the examiner and it is kept as porter and uh, you get short notes on ventilation tubes and also it comes often in uh, discussion of viva and as a consultant the choice of ventilation tubes lies in your hands so you should know uh, what are the types of ventilation tubes what are the materials used and the complications of ventilation tube insertion and how to tackle that complications so today we will discuss on ventilation tubes okay Ventilation tubes. Uh, it is also called vent tubes or meringotomy tubes or tympanotomy. Meringotomy, you know, after meringotomy, insert this. So, meringotomy tube, then uh, tympanotomy tube. Meringotomy, otherwise called tympanotomy. So, it is an opening into the tympanic cavity. So, tympanotomy tube, or otherwise, it is also called pressure equalizing tube, often called as a PE tubes, pressure equalizing tubes. Uh, so these are all uh, synonyms of these ventilation tubes. Regarding the uh, material, what are materials you can use for this one? Ideally, uh, this should be smooth and inert material. Okay, so it should be completely smooth. Otherwise, it can cause damage to the uh, middle layer structures or to the uh, tympanic membrane. So it should be completely smooth and sh it should be inert. The choice of uh, material is always Teflon, Silastic or uh, stainless steel coated with a thin film of carbon and it is preferred over a polyethylene one and bioabsorbable uh, bacteriostatic grommets are waiting to be released to the market. They are under final stage of manufacturing. Bioabsorbable bacteriostatic one. And uh, depending upon the uh, duration of stay in the uh, tympanic cavity, it is divided into a short term ventilation tube, medium, size, um, medium term ventilation tube and a long term ventilation tube. Um, what are the indications of ventilation tubes? There are three indications. One is uh, already told secretary otitis media and another one is adhesive otitis media just remember uh, either there is fluid in the uh, middle ear or there is no air in the middle ear there are one, one condition fluid in the middle ear is secretory otitis media and uh, second one no air that is adhesive otitis media so we have to ventilate the ear okay so that is adhesive otitis media and there is also one more indication which is uh, intractable and uh, very frequent attacks of vertigo in a case of Meniere's disease. Then also in a minute, minute de device that we will discuss along with the class on Meniere's disease. So as such there are three indications for ventilation tube. One is mm. a secretory otitis media, another one is adhesive otitis media and the third is mm. intractable recurrent episodes of vertigo in a case of Meniere's disease. In these three conditions we insert ventilation tubes right and uh, depending upon the duration it is divided into short term ventilation tubes medium uh, uh, term ventilation tubes and long term ventilation tubes so the common one under short term they are the shepherd and also the Donaldson. and usually uh, in 45 percentage of cases they extrude within a period of six months and it is very small and so it is easy to insert even in a uh, very narrow external artery canal. So remember these two names under short term, they are Shepard and Donaldson, right? And this Shepard is the oldest one but still very popular one. And it is, these two piece parts are called the flanges, okay? These two. This one and this one. This is an outer flange. This is the inner flange. Flange. Okay. 
outer one and the inner one and uh, there is a inside there is a small hole for ventilation and this part is the waste okay this is a waste and here there is a this is one is a stainless steel wire what is the purpose of that this stainless steel wire either it can be it is attached like this uh, stainless steel wire or in some cases there will be a inbuilt uh, wire attached with the same material this is usually teflon or silastic teflon is preferred this uh, shepherd is teflon right and the purpose of this stainless steel wire is uh, at the time of removal we can catch hold of this wire and can remove that okay and how will you introduce this I already discussed about the myrgotomy along with the security otitis media. Um, and I'll, today I will discuss on the insertion of the ventilation tube. Okay. So you have to catch hold of this. Take a, a crocodile forceps. And with the crocodile forceps you have to catch hold like It should be like this. Catch hold on the flange. Uh, Sometimes I have seen um, students catching hold it like this. This is wrong. Okay. With the crocodile. This is the tip of the crocodile forces. Right? So this is wrong. You should not do like that. It should be like this only. Catch hold of the, you catch hold of the flanges. Okay, on the flange you catch hold like this. You should not do like this because this part, if it is getting stuck um, to the crocodile forceps, it will be very difficult. And also at times you can there is chance that you injure the tympanic membrane. So catch hold it like this. Catch hold uh, with the crocodile forceps at the flanges. And if this is a uh, Meringotomy. You have to uh, put it. The inner flange should be slipped in. Okay, the one end of the inner flange. Uh, this is the outer flange, and this is the inner flange, isn't it? So, one end of that should be introduced first. This is the outer flange. So the one end of the inner flange you slip into that and then uh, where will you catch hold of this part should be catched off. Okay, with that you first introduce the inner flange through this and then if it is reached there you adjust the site. So after that, so once you have successfully inserted the uh, ventilation tubes, it will look like this. It will look like this. Through the this is the incision and through the incision, it should completely go inside. Only the outer flange will be seen outside. And also this stainless steel wire should you should see that out. This this part should be outside the tympanic membrane. That should see through the external auditory canal. Okay. Now you know how to insert it. This is important. You catch hold of the flanges with the crocodile forceps and the one edge of the inner flange is slipped into the uh, middle layer uh, through the mirgotomy site and after that you adjust it. You can also use a sharp pick for adjusting that. This is the easiest method for insertion of ventilation tube. So under uh, short term comes Shea, uh, Shepard and Donaldson. So Shepard ventilation tube and the Donaldson tube are the short term ventilation tube and in 45 percentage of the cases they get extruded within six months. Okay. Medium term is used when we need ventilation tube for around one to two years. Especially in cases of recurrent uh, acute otitis media or severe adhesion of uh, adhesive otitis media or when there is a ciliary dysfunction. And some surgeons always prefer this medium term because they, in their opinion, it is difficult to predict when, uh, how long the ventilation tubes are required. So mainly this uh, medium term is used for 
uh, one to two weeks of need of ventilation tube and the commonly used ones are the, the Desha, Rutabobin, Armstrong, Paprilla type 1 and uh, Feuerstein tube and uh, Lindman Silverstein tubes. Okay. And coming to the Shah type. This is a Shah tube. It is the uh, uh, commonest one used to, uh, in the medium term ventilation tube. It is made of Teflon. And you can see there is an inner flange. This inner flange is actually triangular shaped. It is like this. Okay. It is triangular shaped, this inner flange. And there is an elongated tip. And it is very easy to uh, introduce this because this part will easily will go into the uh, lower margin of the uh, meringotomy, meringotomy incision, right? And this will also uh, stay there and for a uh, minimum of one year. And the care should be taken that this extrusion is even delayed when we keep the tip of this flange towards the handle of mangus. Okay. After introduction, rotate the uh, tip of this inner flange towards the handle of malleus. Then even this extrusion will be even delayed. So that is shunt. This is a, uh, another one is a rooter bobbin type. Uh, this has got a similarity to one we use in uh, our sewing machines. Isn't it? Those who are uh, using the sewing machine will see a bobbin like this. Isn't it? So this is uh, this usual internal diameter uh, of the lumen is 1.1 millimeter. Here also this is 1.1 millimeter, and this the inner uh, luminal diameter is more wide. It is around 1.25 millimeters. So what is the advantage? When the luminal diameter is more, there is chan less chance of blockage of the tube. That is one advantage of this. And here you can see that this flange to tube. Here it is 90 degree. Here it is curving, isn't it? Here it is at 90 degree. So the extrusion rate will be less. And there are holes here also. In the flanges also there are holes. So what is for uh, what is the use of these holes? This tissue will grow into these holes. So fibrous tissue will come and uh, grow into that. So again the extrusion rate will be less. So the advantage of this is uh, less extrusion rate and because there is uh, in the uh, luminal diameter is more around 1.25 millimeter and then these uh, flanges are thin and the flange to tube uh, angle is 90 degree and also there are holes in the flange so that the tissue will grow into the flange again reducing the rate of extrusion but this is difficult to introduce than that of a short term Shepherd, uh, it is difficult to introduce than a uh, short term, especially the shepherd tube. Okay, that is the rooter bobbin tube. It is mainly made of uh, Teflon and also stainless steel. And this is the Armstrong tube. Armstrong, this one. And this is Paparilla type 1. Uh, the peculiarity of these two is that this can be introduced through a very small incision, meringotomy incision. Uh, here this is the inner flange and this is the outer flange. You can see it is a, the angling of the inner flange. So it is a bevelled type, isn't it? So it is easily introduced through the small incision. And here also the inner flange has got a notch here. So this is a uh, catch hold of the outer flange and then introduce the notch of the inner flange through the incision. And after introducing this notch, make a screwing movement so that the whole inner flange will go uh, below the uh, meringotomy incision that is towards the middle ear. Okay, so notched inner flange and also it is a beveled flange. Both of these are made of silicone or cyelastic and uh, these two are specially designed for introducing through a very small incision. This uh, Feuerstein is a split tube. Actually, uh, this, see, it is split. What is the purpose of this split tube? Uh, it is to prevent blocking of the tube. So the lumen is split, so it will never get blocked. So it's a fewer steam. 
split tube. First you need a split tube and another split tube is JS Knight. Okay, it is made of uh, silicon and elastic. Both are materials are available and uh, it's a very good tube uh, without uh, which work for minimum one year without any uh, chance of blockage. And this is a Lindman silver steel. Lindman silver steel, this one. Lindman silver steel. It has got an inner flange which is flared and also triangular. So this can be easily inserted. So when it goes in, uh, this gets flared. These two flanges will get separated and this will get flared. And so that what happens? There is a wide lumen and again chance of extrusion is less and also chance of blockage is less. So these are the uh, medium term. The Shah, Ruta, Robin, Armstrong, Paparilla type 1 and uh, Feuerstein uh, split tube. JS9 split tube and Lindemann silver steel tube. Minimum for 1 to 2 years. Uh, long term ventilation tubes are mainly the uh, Perli tube and uh, Woody T tube. And uh, the long term is indicated when uh, there is uh, recurrent uh, attacks of secretory otitis media. Whenever you put a uh, ventilation tube and uh, suppose it is extruding after a period of 6 months to 1 year and as soon as this uh, tube is extruded, it again recurs. In that condition, we have to keep it for a very long time, especially in children with a cleft palate and a uh, permanent ciliary dysfunction of the eustachian tube or uh, eustachian tube dysfunction uh, related to cleft palate or there is when there is palatal palsy. In all these conditions, we have to put a long term uh, tubes which, can, which should stay in the middle ear for years. In that case, they have a either they should have a long flange like this pearly tube, or it should, it should have a wider lumen like a goody T tube. Okay, here you can see they just got a uh, very uh, long and uh, very large flange, but it is very soft. And in the disadvantage of this uh, uh, long term tubes are it is very difficult to introduce. And we need a very wide incision. Okay. So, pearly is made of silastic and uh, or teflon. And it has got a very large and bulky flange. But it is very soft. And this uh, goody tea tubes. This is the inner part. And it has got a very um, wide lumen. So that it is uh, very resistant to blockage. And the length of this flange and the lumen can be uh, cut appropriate to the size of the middle ear. Okay, if this is the incision and this is the middle ear, the first you have to make it collapse with the crocodile forceps and this, uh, this is introduced. And uh, this is introduced uh, with the after collapsing it with a crocodile forceps, first you introduce it and after introduction this will flare and it will like, uh, lie like this. Okay, so this part is made, if it is like this, this is made collapsible and hold it like with the crocodile forceps and then introduce through the um, through the myrmotomy uh, incision site and after introduction this will flare up and will lie in the uh, <coughs> in the middle ear and this long um, tube will remain inside the external auditory canal so you have to uh, tell the parents that you will see a uh, long tube in the external auditory canal and that should not be disturbed that should be advice should be given otherwise they will think that it is a foreign body in the external artery canal and they will try to remove. In that case, it will cause severe uh, damage to the tympanic membrane and so many problems related to that. that so that should be advised. So this is how you introduce a goody T tube. Uh, what are the complications of these uh, uh, ventilation tubes? One is 
at the time of uh, introduction there is chance of bleeding and later on they can go for infection and also persistent bleeding sometimes occur and if the uh, amount of secretions are very high very copious amount then there will be persistent drainage of the fluid through the ventilation tube then it can, there can be chance of blockage to the tube if the tube is how can you know that the tube is blocked and uh, that is upon introduction the child will be symptomatically very much better and after a while if the symptoms recur and if you do a tympanogram you again get a b curve okay what will be the curve uh, if the tube is in situ without blockage it will be a uh, straight curve it will be a flat curve right not straight it is will be a flat curve and if you are getting a b curve again that means that the used, uh, ventilation tube is blocked in that case you have to remove it okay so it is a uh, blockage of the tube is a complication and then uh, there will be scarring and also weakening of the site of incision tympanic membrane scarring and later on going for tympanosclerosis then extrusion before the complete resolution of disease there is chance of extrusion of the tube and also there will be chance of a permanent perforation so bleeding infection then uh, persistent drainage of fluid then block tube or extrusion of the tube then uh, scarring permanent perforation and tympanosclerosis all these are complications and also there is chance of granulation tissue formation especially in the case of a long term ventilation tubes some special problems also can happen while in introducing the ventilation tube one is when you try to introduce it through the bronchotomy site there is chance of accidental slippage into the middle ear in that case uh, if you can see that you can remove it otherwise if it has gone into the mesotympanum or into the hypotympanum and you can can't see there is no need to remove as because uh, there is very less chance of uh, an infection as this material is inert it may usually made of teflon or elastic so leave it like that and uh, <coughs> ask the patient to come for regular follow up another advice you have to give that avoid swimming because at the time if the water enters there is chance of infection uh, and if the patient can tolerate swimming without entry of water like using an ear plug then you can uh, allow them to swim otherwise ask the patient to restrain from swimming as long as the ventilation tube is in situ okay so uh, we have discussed about the indications of uh, ventilation tubes the types of ventilation tubes according to the uh, short term medium term and long term and also the complications this you have to remember um, for your clinical practice and also for your exams